and welcome, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Melon Nostalgic Runner. And we are back for another fresh new episode of The Real Housewives of Orange County. And this is season 18, and this is episode 9. And um, I believe the episode is called A Perfect World. Um, yeah, things are heating up. <laughs> um, I, and also, too, because I still don't know what's happening after this episode because we had the mid-season trailer. So I think this is this episode. I think is getting us set up for some of the things that we saw in the mid-season trailer. Um, particularly, I think the scene where a woman fell, and I think I know who the woman is who fell. Um, but yeah. So anyway, without further ado, though, let's get into the show. Um, this was a cute episode. I enjoyed it. Um, until I didn't. <laughs> and there's some people I'm going to be getting together on this review. Um, Gina, I'm speaking directly to you. Because I don't know if I believe that you did that on accident. I kind of don't know if I believe that. And we'll, we'll get to it when we get there, though. But anyway, so the episode starts with... Um, Heather, she's in Alexis' car, and they're riding around, and she invites Alexis to um, the charity event that she's going to be having in Son Sonona, um, which is wine country, so Northern California. And um, it's for this charity, that, this charity event, and she's going to have all the ladies walk, and um, the... Group is called Family Equality. Um, so it's all about trying to um, basically gay rights when it comes to family. And um, I, I, I didn't really know too much about it. And other than like, they also, they, they did mention in the show that they won a case. Um, so they must be decent enough charity where they have funds where they're winning cases in different states that um, have potential discriminatory laws when it comes to the LGBTQ plus and family. And um, they mentioned that they won a lawsuit against Florida um, because Florida was trying to make it illegal in a classroom for children to say gay, even though that might be people's reality, that might actually be people's family, you know. That kind of thing. So, anyway, she does invite Alexis, but she also mentions Shannon's coming too. And Alexis, <sighs> I do not like Alexis Bellino. For those who don't know, I don't like her. And really, it's like, you're a friend of, stay in your lane, stay in your place. Be happy that you were invited. Yes, you're friends with Heather. That's cool, that's cute, that's great, I guess. I don't know. But at the end of the day, I don't know why you're trying to take Shannon's spot because if it wasn't for her, you wouldn't have a storyline and you wouldn't even be back on this show. So I need you to tread lightly when it comes to everything. Honestly, I really just wish you weren't on the show, but that's neither here nor there. Anyway, so um, back after that little brief interaction, Heather is with her family in LA um, because for those who don't know, she has like multiple homes. I think like total like three homes. She's one in Orange County. She has like a, um, her and um, Terry have like this smaller like penthouse situation. Um, yeah, they have like three homes. Um, I'm trying to remember if they have, a, they have the apartment in LA. They have a larger house in LA. And then they have like the penthouse situation in Orange County. No. They have the penthouse situation in LA. They have a large place in um, LA with the whole entire family. And then they have another house in Orange County. I, I can't keep up. They have three different houses, <laughs> okay? But the family's there. And um, so she's getting ready, you know, to get ready for this trip. So she's getting everyone ready for a trip for the, um, she's talking about the trip and talking about how um, and then she does talk to her kids because um, I think her oldest, her son, was there. Um, and she literally was quizzing him, like, which place do y'all like better? Do y'all like Orange County or do you like L.A.? Everybody likes L.A. 
I don't know if that means this might be her last season on this franchise or not. Um, I am kind of curious because I'm, I'm just wondering what would give if she was go, to go to Beverly Hills. But at the same time, if it's if she on this one, Orange County, she's only she's kind of the only one with the money. <laughs> Her and Shannon, Shannon, we know the situation. She she ain't got it. In the words of Tasha K. Um, yeah. So I feel like I don't know. But anyway, so it's a short little cute scene with her family. And then from there, we just see all the different ladies getting ready for this um, trip. So we see Emily talking to Shane, packing up, and then they're with the dog and stuff. And um, that's when we find out actually from Emily that they're all going to be modeling in this fashion show. So they're having a fashion show, but they're actually all modeling in it. So they're all bringing um, clothes that they can wear for this event um, for this charity. And um, so everyone's pretty much on board, you know. And then from there, we go to Jen and Katie. Jen is packing. Katie's also packing. They're not together. They're in their separate, you know, respective places. But um, they're FaceTiming each other. And by the way, I think I mentioned in the last episode, but I'm going to mention it again. I love their budding friendship. And for just their friendship alone, because it really does seem like Katie is, you know, giving the support that Jen truly needs in this group. Um, keep Katie on the show, just for that alone. I don't, I don't care if, I don't care for how her and Heather's interactions are, but I'm also kind of side eyeing Heather too, because I don't think she's all the way right with things either. Um, but yeah, Jen and Katie, love them. And so Jen is breaking down. She's not having a good day because she actually just came from deliberation when it comes to her, to her divorce. And we find out in the scene that she's going to be meeting the ladies there later. She can't fly with them, which sucks. Um, because they finally do have a court date to get this, to get the contemporary um, child support and potentially um, temporary spousal support. And so, um, yeah, she has to go to the court. She has to go to court. And so she kind of breaks down and talks to Katie about it. And Katie, you know, feels for her because Katie mentions in her situation, her confessional, she, when she, her divorce was bitter and ugly and she didn't get anything from her ex. Not a dime. And shades a crap of her ex in her confessional too. She's like, I, she's like, I even saw a picture of him and I was just disgusted. And even his hairline's trying to run away from him like I did. I was like, ooh, yes. So, by the way, I mentioned before, I love the dynamic of them too. And then we go on to the next scene. So all the ladies are pulling up with the drivers. So the drivers are driving them to um, probably like a private run runway situation because Heather gets the ladies a private jet. And so they get, they're get they going to Sonona in style. Um, so that's kind of the other reason why I was like, oh, that sucks that Jen doesn't get to like be a part of that because the situation. So anyway, but Heather has the ladies in the signed seats on the private jet because her goal is she wants to make sure, number one, Shannon and Alexis are not sitting anywhere near each other. And then number two, her and Katie are sitting near each other because we already kind of knew this. Heather didn't forget. She didn't let anything go. And the interesting thing about this also was she had Gina with Heather. I mean, Gina with Katie. Because we know, really, Heather did not really forgive Gina for real. Um... I don't think she's telling the whole group. She's keeping a good eye on her. And so she was like, you could go over there. Pardon me. Um, so, and Gina peeped it. Gina peeped it because Gina's talking all this cash, you know, cash-ish about Katie and they're hanging out. And honestly, Katie, I'm speaking directly to you. I hope you rip Gina 
to shreds at the reunion if you don't do it during the season. Because the way Gina's still trying to play in your face, as if she had no part in what you and her did to Heather. Yeah. Anyway. So they arrive at Sonona and um, they're at this, they're actually at this um, town that's out, like it's, they're in the county. They're not actually, I don't think it's a city. I think it's just a county. And I should know this because I've actually driven by there when I was in California back in 2019. I didn't stick around to eat wine tasting because I had to get to my next Airbnb situation, but I was over in that area. But anyway, so they're at this cute little place called um, Dom Ranch. And it was nice. The, some of the ladies thought it was a little too homey, I could tell. But nah, it was nice. It was nice. Um, I think we've kind of already seen that Katie's not an outdoorsy girl, even though she is a commentator for the golf channel, which is out child. Anyway, she she she's not one of them. And um Alexis, she packed the wrong shoes, but who cares? So anyway, they arrive and um so then Heather had planned out where the ladies were going to be doing, they're going to be broken into two groups. Again, for the same reason, as I mentioned before, and it's the same, kind of the same groups as um, what I said. So um, basically we have Heather, um, Alexis, and Tamara on one side, and then the other side is the rest of the ladies. And... Um, Gina, um, so, and they all each go out to lunch, basically. And Shannon orders a drink. Yet again. The reason why I'm mentioning this is because the other ladies are making a big deal about it. Um, I guess I'm confused why they're making a big deal. Um, because... I, I would, I guess I would think if you're going to make a big deal, you should have made a big deal about it initially when she said it. Because Shannon already did mention that she is having a couple drinks here and there. And this is also not the first time that she's ordered drinks around y'all and y'all didn't check her. But now it's almost like they're making a point to like check her about it. And um, so Gina kind of had a comment in her confessional. She's like, you're not hanging out with the people who aggravate you. And you're actually hanging out with me and I don't drink. So you, you would think this would be the time where it'll just be easier to not drink. Because Shannon basically said like, oh, I'm on vacation. I'm going to have a drink. And the only thing that I'm sighing, and I've said it before this whole entire time, Shannon's on probation, so she shouldn't be drinking at all. I mean, I'm just going to call the thing a thing. Um, whether she has a problem or not, technically you're not supposed to drink when you're on probation. Like legally you're not supposed to. I don't know what kind of deal she figured out. Um, I don't know if she, like, cause I guess I would assume she would have to like see her probation officer. Um, cause you're usually on probation for like a year, I believe. Um, I don't know if it's different for the state of California, but like. Yeah, she's on probation, so I'm just a little confused about that. Um, so that would be the only reason why I would sigh-eye her. It wouldn't be about whether she has a drinking problem or not, because at the end of the day, that's not my business. That's, I don't know. And even if she was my friend, unless your friend actually, you know, unless you, I feel like you don't know your friends for real ever, unless you live with them, number one. And... Number two, we know some of these ladies are not actually really friends or coworkers. So unless she's truly opened up to you to tell you that or showed you some signs, I, none of us are paying therapists. I would not be the one and none of us are doctors or addiction or addiction specialists. So not my place. That's all I would say about that. But anyway. So then 
Over on the other side, we have, um, actually, in both cases, the, the subject of John and Alexis at the red carpet pops up. Because, and this is a big deal because John, all throughout Shan's relationship and the time on, on the show, he said he didn't like attention. He didn't like this. He didn't like that. But yeah, he's now on the red carpet with Alexis. Because we know she, we know he's lying and we know he's Basula. And um, Shannon slyly ca called a thing a thing. She's like, he's wearing the belt that I brought him. He's wearing the expensive shoes I brought him. Hell. Prior to me, he didn't even know about designer outfits. So I was like, speak your speech. And one thing I will say as Aries, because I'm an Aries too, we will we know how to upgrade a man and make the man look like something. I'm just gonna say it. I, that's one of those things. I'm not not to toot my own horn, but child, I'm to my own horn. My ex. He's all right looking, but I was like, I can help you look even better. And honestly, in all the cases, I would say the last, like, I would say the last two of my exes, you're welcome. Just say, anyway, <laughs> catch that. Um, so. The ladies are still separated, so we have Tamara, Heather, and Alexis. They're at the champagne wine tasting thing that is put together by the charity that she's, you know, part of. And we find out that Heather has special wines that um, she helped create, and they're all named after her family. So the wine tasting was, like, very Heather-related, but it was actually kind of cute. And um, Jen actually ends up joining them um, because it's four and four. And um, we find out that the deliberation did not go well, not as planned at all. And she's going to be only receiving 6000 a month for child support for five kids in California. Not a lot of money. Y'all already know that. I mean, I don't even know if that's a lot of money for even like two kids in California. It's California and it's Orange County. But I guess it really just does depend on where. I don't know. I, 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 I'm confused by that. I think Jen's lawyer, I think she could have got a better lawyer, but she probably can't afford it. So who knows? I don't, I don't know. I'm not, and sorry. That was no shade. I know I said it that way. That is literally no shade. We know her storyline. We know what it is. I would not say she can't afford it because of like trying to like shame her. But we know part of the situation is she really kind of does need the spousal support and the child support. Like to help her out. Because right now she's kind of a single parent. Well, she ain't kind of. She's a single parent. And her boyfriend's helping her out. But like... At the end of the day, that's not really, I mean, yes, you expect your partner to step up, but that's not really his responsibility for real, for real, you know? It's really hers, but she doesn't have income and stuff like that because she didn't have to. She literally was a housewife, like a true housewife. And so this is all she's getting. And yeah. So then by the way, she can't. Um, that's Shannon. Tamara shades her in the confessional. She's like, yeah, she's like, that's not a lot, but like Brian's helping her. And what I, what bothers me is that she's probably going to like take full advantage of that and not get a job. And I'm just like, Tamara, why are you so hard on, mm. that, and that's supposed to be her friend, Jen, I'm speaking directly to you. Stop letting Tamara play in your face. We already know mid-season trailer. She's going to do more. But I just, what bothers me is Jen gave her that. Because Jen is cool with her. And really, she shouldn't be cool with her for real, for real. And it's like, as soon as you basically give Tamara that, we're cool. That's when Tamara's going to do her BS. She does it every time. 
you you need to kind of be cool with her, but not really. You know, don't don't give her too much, and you're already giving her too much, and you already did give her too much by forgiving her after the way she treated you last season. But anyway, sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself here. And by the way, and then also Tamara mentions Shannon's drinking yet again. And it's like, you literally just had this conversation with Shannon about the drinking two episodes ago. Why are we still talking about it, Tamara? It's not your business. And number two, for how much you drink, you should say less. Like, I would, I would go on mute challenge if I were you. Anyway, so then back on the other side, we have <clears throat> Emily and Gina, Katie and Shannon. They're doing a spa day. And I ain't gonna hold you. I'd rather be at the spa day. Um, as much as I do have a bucket list of doing like a wine type tasting in that area, I'd just rather be with the, that group. <laughs> I'd rather be with that spa day group. Mine's Gina. I just wish Gina wouldn't have been there. But the others... Because honestly, although Emily has gotten on my nerves, like not really last episode, but the episodes before, Emily doesn't bother me too much. It's the Emily and Gina combination, really Gina. It's really Gina for me. Cause I don't know. I just don't like Gina <laughs> for real. Um, I don't hate her. I don't have as much of vitriol for her as I do uh, as like a Tamra or like a Alexis Bellino because yeah but anyway so Gina shares with Lee she got a dog um and she talks about her in the Travis situation I hate to say this but I don't care um so I'm not gonna even talk about it much and then while they're all trying to get ready and get set to do this um spa day thing and you know pick out their senses and whatnot Shannon gets a phone call, so she excuses herself. And so the ladies are talking, and they're just talking about everything when it comes to Shannon and and all this stuff. And then, uh, well, they're not talking about Shannon yet. They're still talking about Gina and Travis. And I'm just kind of like, again, I hate to do this, but I just, whenever she starts, whenever Gina starts talking about her and Travis, I just kind of drown it out because I'm just kind of like, I don't care. Um... Because I guess we find out also that Gina did this decision without thinking about Travis. Shocker. Anyway. Um, so. Shannon comes back clearly distraught. Because she just got off the phone with her attorney. And so she offered John money to settle. He refuses. He still wants all the money or not at all. And so clearly Shannon's not happy and the ladies are trying to comfort her. Back at, at the wine tasting, we have um, the ladies talking to Heather about Katie and they just really want Heather to just like drop it with Katie and hopefully it does work. I, I mean, clearly based off, I think confessionals, I don't know if it did, but like, Tamara even tries to say, like, hey, I think Gina set that set you up, set set her up. And I mean, that's the obvious, but you know, Katie didn't have to take the bait, but she's new. I don't know what you expected there. So and um <clears throat> I guess I just, I guess when it comes to the Kate, I mean, I think I already mentioned before, I really wish Katie and Heather can really just like drop it and let it go because it's not even that serious. But um, Heather is basically just like, you know, we don't have to be besties. We'll keep you cordial. And that's that on that. Because um, the ladies already know they're, they're not going to push her to do anything she want to do. And then so Jen, for whatever reason, tries to push Alexis to try to talk to Shannon and all the ladies are like, no. And I don't understand why Jen thought that would be a good idea either. It's like, you think Shannon really wants to talk to Alexis Bellina? After how mean and nasty she's been towards her. 
No. And this is what I'm just like, I, as much as I love Jen, I really need Jen to stop being so naive at her grown age. Stop acting like you ain't been outside in life. I, I just really wish she just would. And I, I, I hope she's like that because I, I get why she's probably like that because actually it speaks to her character. She's a good person, but she just needs to realize most people aren't good people. <laughs> okay. Or, and most people ain't, it, it, are not as non-petty as you. You know, you do your passive aggressive pettiness on social media. These are ladies, ain't, there's no passiveness about them, okay? And no, you know, and especially since Alexis has shown multiple times that she says one thing but does another thing. So yeah. And um, Alexis states that she did try to talk, talk John to settling, but he refuses. And I don't believe that. Because Alexis, this is the second time you've had a significant other, Sue Shannon. You're, I, I don't know what it is, but I think you have some type of weird heart on for Shannon. I don't get it, but I think it's weird. And it just comes off that way on, on my screen. I think it's giving jealousy because you really want to be back on this show and Shannon's in the way of that. You want you it's giving single white female. You want to replace her, including on this show. And really, it's probably mainly on this show. The John thing is just an added bonus. Anyway. So back at the spa, the ladies, um, or kind of just stating like how, like Alexa should be staying out of this. I don't know why she keeps like basically butting herself in as if like she is John's representative. Because even in that scene before when she was talking to the ladies about like how she tried to get John to settle or whatever, she literally sounds like John's representative. And really we know that she is John's mouthpiece. Like he, him and his narcissistic self is probably getting off watching this show for how much he's being talked about. And it's just, it's really disgusting. But anyway, so, um, Gina then slips up and mentions a video. And this is where I need to get this together. I don't believe she slipped up. I think she did it on purpose. I think she made it seem like she did that by accident. But looking at, look at Heather's body language. Even Heather caught that she was not, she did it on purpose. Because Gina, you're not a good actor, okay? Or actress. You're not a good actress. Like, it, that was not an accident. You did it on purpose. You did it on purpose. And you did it for multiple reasons. You did it for two reasons. N number one, you know, you're, no, you know no one cares about your storyline. Number one. So you're going to make Shannon part of your storyline. Because you're desperate. Number two. You kind of alluded that you don't really care about Shannon for real, for real, because of that sly comment that you made about her drinking. Even though this has been, it's been multiple episodes and we know that Shannon's drinking. She's not getting trash. Yes, we know, we, we know she shouldn't be drinking at all, okay? But at the end of the day, this is a grown woman, okay? And you even alluded in the episode before, when you got into your DUI, you didn't stop drinking immediately. So let Shannon get her journey together, figure it out on her own. It's like you were able to do that, okay? And then the other thing was, Gina knew that this information came from Katie. This is her trying to set up Katie again, and you cannot fool me. You can't fool me. I feel like this is her continually trying to set up Katie. Because she's threatened by Katie. Because honestly, if it wasn't for what happened with Shannon and everything else, you probably would not be back on this show this season. I bet, like, I feel like that's what it is. So anyway. Um, so clearly... Shannon's like, what video? She's like, what video? And then finally, and this is what I was like, Katie, I wanted to shake Katie through the screen. Katie 
is the one who finally breaks the news on what the video was about. And I mean, there really was nothing that Katie could do because it was gonna it was gonna be that way anyway. But I just hate that she had to be the one to do it when really we know Gina set her up. Gina set you up. And hopefully that doesn't bite you later on. And hopefully you could confront Gina for that BS because she tried. That's the second time she set you up. Um, anyway. So Shannon is, of course, very upset because she was not expecting a video. And then Gina tries to clean it up. She's like, yeah, you can just tell your attorney, like, you know, he's trying to extort you, this, that, this, and that. And she has no emotion of, like, really having any remorse for what she did, which is why I think she did that on purpose. There was no real sense of urgency and, like, oh, gosh, I effed up. And the confessionals, she's like, ooh. She basically gave me, um... For those who watch Real Housewives of Potomac, that was some Ashley Darby. She was very, that was very Ashley Darby of her. If you know, you know. Okay, so of course, Shan's upset. She walks away. And this is why I mentioned Emily, you could, Emily was clearly irritated by what Gina did. Didn't want to call her out, but she definitely gave this look like, what the heck? I don't know. I, I, I know Gina and Heather are best friends on this show, but I still see that things aren't really all the way together. Because Heather was, not Heather, but um, Emily was just like, girl, why would you do that? <laughs> that was literally the look that she said, that she gave, like, why would you do that? And because Gina pretends that she didn't know that Shannon didn't know. Everyone knew that Shannon didn't know. And even the last episode, that was clear that Shannon didn't know. For her to just up and do that, it was on purpose. Anyway, so then as Shannon gets back, she and all the ladies, so the other ladies go to where they need to go for the spa thing. Gina's still there because Gina feels guilty. I don't know if she does or not. And she basically, Shannon states to her like, I just talked to my attorney and just said for her friend, just give John what he wants. So she went to trying to fight the case to just being completely defeated. And it's all because of Gina's news. And so Shannon excuses herself. She's like, I don't want to do any of this anymore and goes to her room. And that's how that ended. So then back, um, the ladies are back from wine. And Emily and Katie, they are the only ones that we see that do the spa thing. I guess maybe Gina did her own thing. Um, so... Emily and Katie are in the hot tub. And then while this is happening, Shannon's back in her cabin and she won't stop crying. She's been crying the whole entire time. And Katie asks about Emily, about how's her friendship with Alexis? And, you know, Emily explains like, you know, I'm closer, but I'm not like, we're not besties. And so um, Katie was like, can you talk some sense into Alexis to not let this like, she's going too far, you know, basically saying like, kind of have the talk with Alexis, woman to woman, of her tearing another woman down. And if this wasn't Alexis, I would feel like this will work. It's not going to work because Alexis is not a girl's girl. She's a pick me. And we're going to probably see that in the next episode. I don't see that it's going to work out at all. Like, if you've watched Jesus Jugs on this show before, she takes on the personality of whoever she's with. So when she was with her husband, she was a super Jesus freak and was very judgmental and kind of a jerk and very pretentious and much like basically acted just like her ex-husband. Um, and I don't know if that really was her acting like her ex-husband or if that was her. But she was not likable on the show the first time around. And she 
It's very much my man, my man, my man, my man, my man. She's not a girl's girl. So anyway, so then next um, we have Tamara. She calls, this is like kind of a little bit of a mini montage. Um, Tamara checks in on her daughter Sophie, sees she, how she's doing. Sophie's giving her one word to answers, doing some teach type stuff. Um, Jen checks in with Andy to see if Will has a kiss, her ex-husband has a kiss, or if he has a kiss, he has a kiss, so he's going to be doing the dinner night and all that. And I know we're not supposed to like Andy or whatever his name is. I forgot. I think his name is Andy, right? Um, Jen's boyfriend. But considering the fact that he's doing a lot for her, I see why she really, you know, she, she loves him. And... But she's very dependent on him, so there's that, you know. But at this moment, until she gets her divorce settled, and what can you do, you know? Especially in her situation, she went from being a she's a kept woman, you know, formerly kept woman. And this, honestly, for those who ever wondered why I just never subscribed to being a kept woman. You just need to see Jen's situation and see that's why. I will, nope. Mm -mm. And I'm seeing it happen with my, my mom's side of the family too many times where I just adamantly refuse. <laughs> it could never be me. Anyway, um, so Shannon then goes to talk, to the, at the very end, Shannon does go to talk to Heather and every, I guess everyone's supposed to be getting ready to go to dinner and Shannon's still in her robe. And she's like, I, I, I don't know if I'm going to go to dinner or not, basically. And she consoles. And you could tell Shannon's completely broken. Because if you would have told me last season or even the season before that, that Shannon would be consoling to Heather about her personal business. We've come a long way. And also, too, That's how broken Shannon is, and I, I really do feel for her. Because, I mean, let's be real. For her to get a DUI at her grown age, clearly her mental health was not together. So it bothers me that you have people like Tamara and like Jesus Jugs and John, and even a little bit this episode, Gina being the way they are like you don't do that kind of behavior and you're and you're good okay especially when you are like in your like 50s or 60s let's be real here anyway so shannon shares the full more details of that night with heather and let's get into that so she, we find out that Shannon left John's and that accident happened within five minutes of her, not even five minutes, like two minutes of her leaving John's house. So that was just like not that far away, like enough where he would have heard it. And what hurt Shannon the most about this whole entire situation is I think this is when she found out that John never cared for her. And I don't think we've alluded to that really enough until she really talks about it. Because it's clear he did it. He's an opportunist. We, we know that. And now he has a, no, a new opportunity, but at least she's, she's hot in his mind. I'm not saying that Shannon is not. But like, let's look at the optics. Jesus Jugs is not the most intelligent person. I mean, she's, she was called Jesus Jugs for a reason. That was not, <laughs> that was not a compliment, you know? And she's your typical blonde, bombshell looking type, type of girl, younger than, than Shannon. So, I mean, his ego probably just loves what's going on right now, you know? And... But anyway, back to how she found out that he didn't care for her. 
he did not go out to check on her or nothing. So he finds out what happens and pretty much just goes back to bed. He didn't even care. And then we see, so basically Sham felt completely abandoned by John. And the thing that's wild is John was drinking with her. That was her drinking buddy. You know, they clearly were in a toxic relationship together. And so it kills me that he's trying to make it like she's the only one with the drinking problem. Even though he, she wasn't doing that drinking by herself. Hello? Um, and then the moment where she has, she falls for grit from Gracie abandons her. That's literally what happened. And we, we can tell that's what happened. And then Shannon shares a, a pictures that he, that she sent to him after she did what she did that night and he still didn't contact her or anything. And these pictures were disgusting. Like Shannon was bloodied up. That's when, like, this is right after she got in her accident. So she had the, I mean, and I will say this, and this is just, I'm not trying to be hard on Shannon. I feel like we've been really kind of coddling Shannon a little bit, to be honest, when it comes to the show. But like, I don't like how Shannon sometimes presents things to make us feel sorry for her. Because at the end of the day, you were an adult who went behind the wheel and potentially... Well, you didn't harm yourself, but you could have harmed other people besides yourself. And I don't like that we're talking about the John Jansen of it all and her making the mistake, but we're not really talking enough about how lucky you were that you didn't kill someone else. You know, I guess to me, that's the only thing when it comes to storyline that I'm just kind of side eyeing. It's like, and... And this is not me being judgmental. Oh, you know what? Full transparency. I'm, let me just call a thing a thing. I've got a DUI before, okay? Like, that's why I'm able to speak to it. Um, it was, well, I was 21. Okay? So, I guess when it comes to, like, how I'm looking at this woman who's in her 60s who did this, Yes, it's clear she wasn't in a good place to do what she did, but I'm also still kind of just questioning how would you let it get that far? But at the same time, I can't question that too much because I've been there before. When my situation happened, I was in a horrible, toxic relationship with someone who was my drinking buddy. The only difference is that guy didn't really abandon me, but he didn't really discourage me from continuing my bad behavior. Like, it wasn't good, <laughs> you know? So I, I, I get, I get it. I get it. It's just, I just, I guess for me, even when I did what I did, I never pinned myself to be a victim because at the end of the day, I knew what I did was wrong. And I think that's kind of what's being missed. And as much as I don't like to give Gina the benefit of the doubt, maybe that's what Gina was alluding to with the fact that Shan is still drinking. Because it's a matter of, are you really sorry for what you did all the way? Or are you sorry about the consequences? And I think it's a little bit of both, but like the fact that she's still doing some of the old behaviors, I see why she would question it. But at the same time, Gina already mentioned it. And I will say even my own situation, I did not stop any of my own behaviors immediately. It took me actually years to get my stuff together. Okay. <laughs> and not to make any excuses, but when I did what I did, I did not live in Chicago. This is pre-Lyft and Uber days. 
so you know it it was a long time ago but now especially now i mean uh, now there's lyft and uber i just that's the part that i'm not getting the fact that there are options, but I see why, because she got in an argument with her man and she was leaving his house. And really, she probably shouldn't have even been there to begin with, because clearly this man, with it being as toxic a relationship as it was, was a trigger for her. And she was coping through drinking. And sometimes it takes you know, you, you sometimes just don't be knowing that until you're in it, you know? And I guess in my case, I was fortunate enough when I had that kind of a situation, I was younger. And so, mind you, it took years to get my stuff together. That mistake took a long time to clean up. I mean, a long time. for the, And I tried to allude to in my last video Let's be clear, and it's rightfully so, because you're putting others in danger and everything when it comes to all that, along with yourself. But if you're fortunate enough to not hurt anyone and you just maybe told your car the most, that is a mistake. That is a financial mistake. It, 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 you pay for it. You pay for it. It took me, I would say, 10 years to get that cleaned up. Like, as far as, like, um, took seven years for it to get off my record, clearly. And then another, like, quite a few years after that to get myself financially together. Because, yeah, a lot of, because, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's no joke, so... And I wasn't laughing because it's funny, because it really isn't. It was more like a nervous laugh. But yeah, so, but anyway, so she does share those, the pictures and that picture, and I'm, I'm sorry, I went on a huge tangent, but the pictures were pretty scary. I mean, she was bloodied up and it was a whole entire mess. And then that's how the episode ends. It ends in to be continued. And again, I, it's getting, it's getting interesting this season, but what I will say is, um, I hope Shannon really does have remorse for what she did. And I really do hope that, you know, she gets whatever help she needs and she doesn't let this toxic leech of an ex break her more than he clearly already has. I've been there before. I get it. But at the end of the day, you're fortunate to still be alive. You're fortunate you didn't kill anyone. I want her to really, I wish she would focus more on that and just leave that noise that is at POS alone. And um, Emily did kind of share some insight in this episode where she was like, I just, and even Katie said the same thing. Both Katie and Emily were just like, before Shannon did change her mind and just paid it, she should just pay it and be done with them. Absolutely. Pay it and be done with them. But the problem is you have this power hungry narcissist who wants to be a housewife so bad that he's going to make it a point to be on this show. And we're gonna, when we saw in the mid-season trailer, he made an appearance. And... That's the part that gets me. And I guess when it comes to even when it came to my toxic situation that I had, I moved back to my parents' house to get away from that dude. Okay? <laughs> I was like, the way I was like, I am going to be humbled and I am moving back to my parents' house because I know this dude didn't have enough cojones to go back to my, come to my parents' house to try to get me to be back with him. Cause I got I got mama and daddy, okay. <laughs> and sometimes you just gotta do that. You gotta do what's best for you, and hopefully Shannon finds that. 
But anyway, that does conclude the episode. I know I dragged this review up a little bit longer, but I think more happened with this episode than the last couple episodes. But anyway, that does conclude the video. Please like, comment, subscribe to the channel if you get anything out of the content. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Melon Stouch Runner, and I will see you next time. Bye!